Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome to a life update um, since moving to China. Uh, this this video is overdue and it started overdoing even more when I started like creating so much more content and then remembering the routine. Before I release all of that, y'all don't even know when, why or how I ended up in China. So I wrote like four points that i'm gonna try and focus on and hopefully try keep this video i live on say try keep this video short because next thing is not short okay um so i'm gonna just look down and read the first point that i wrote and that is the decision to leave or how the decision to leave south korea came up and how i felt about it overall so it was simple i was literally chilling on my bed and my brother walked in and he was like hey uh, me and spare and i think a couple of friends have, have been thinking about moving to china do you want to go like do you want to be part of this uh process that we are thinking of um doing and it was very easy for me to be like sure because that's the exact same way we ended up in south korea i think spare spoke to sim sim spoke to me and he literally sim spoke to me was it a week before we had to start applying for south korea so there was no time uh when i moved to south korea to like think about like sincerely and like do my research no by the time we found out applications were open it was time to move similar to china so what happened is i can't even give you a specific day month i mean I don't know if it was before or after august but i'll just say somewhere there um they mentioned this and as they're mentioning this they also on some by the way um we would have to start like applying for china soon like we'd have to start the process soon because there's a lot of documents um that we need to do and because of that i was like eh like i didn't i think my decision my my decision in the moment was i'll say yes and start the process and while i'm waiting rather i change my mind later having done my documents rather than to decide which yes i want to go later and like now i'm behind uh so yeah that's what i did uh at first though it was overall like a shock i'm like how did we get here um what's going on what do you mean move to china like we've heard so much about china china was never a thing in our minds we were always or when we came to South Korea, it was thing of um, we bought our one-way ticket and we're going to stay in South Korea for as long as we um, can, for as long as we hope, for as long as we want. And then from South Korea, it would be to go back home, you know. Now there's this option and like now it's time to weigh the pros and cons. And where I was in general, I was starting to feel like I'm at a place where I'm like, mm, I've done the most I can do it in Jeju Island in my small city so i was already looking for like um um move i was really <laughs> i was already in the process or just considering moving but maybe to like another city or to another province so i was going to either move to busan daegu or daejeon one of those three um but in all of that i wasn't also as motivated to do the physical work because you have to reapply um with epic if you want to move to another province and i'm like imagine doing documents all over again just to move to another province so because of that mm, i wasn't motivated like i wasn't serious enough to do that process by the time they came to speak to me about china i just thought no you know what i'll do i'll just move to the city so i was living in a smaller town in a smaller city in the island I was just going to move to the other side of the island and I was like, at least if I'm closer to the airport because I used to fly a lot. So I thought if I'm closer to the airport, maybe I'll be a little bit happier because previously I would land at the airport and then still have to take another bus, an hour bus ride to get to my place. Hey, yeah. So weighing all of those things, I was like, okay. Um... Is it worth moving to a whole nother country like 
starting all those documents and starting life all over again and yo start ish there was a lot to consider i will not lie and i i, I want to say this time around i took my time even though i already said yes like i said yes on probably a day after but the thought process was actually a bit tougher this time um because there's so much considered when you think about china um there's no maybe there is i don't know but there's no like set program where you can be like i'm applying at teach english in china dot co dot za or in that time i did not hear of any of that so i knew more of you studying everything from scratch you're doing everything you doing your own apartment hunting you're doing your own um finding your own schools dealing with directly with your principals um you can get agents you can there's just a lot a lot to consider and yeah i hope i rambled enough but in the rambling i hope i made sense um but yeah overall i was pretty anxious i won't lie i i i, I would try to hide myself up but i was pretty anxious but also like try to remain like in deep thoughts about it for quite a long time until i felt until i got to a point where i was like okay like this is it i'm not going back oh and the other pressure was when the when the contract renewal did come up and by then i don't even think i had finished a single document and then and then i had to decide do i say yes um, i'm renewing and my 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 only change my mind at the end of the year or do i tell them upfront that no i'm not renewing even though if i have even though i had no plan i had not started um sorry even though i had like no job secured and no like nothing secured for china do i say i'm not renewing and just hope for the best it all goes well at the end of the year or there was just a young dilemma and i remember just deciding that you know what i'm just gonna not renew this contract yes in south korea and just hope that china works out and it did um okay next question i'm not next question another point i wrote was choosing it um um what to do or like what level i want to teach just choosing china in itself was a lot so I'm going to just do the teaching the teaching aspect. So I've been teaching um English in Korea, I've been teaching elementary and high school. And I felt like I had like a good run and I just wanted to teach babies. I wanted to teach <laughs> I wanted to teach kindergarten, I wanted to teach like smaller humans just for the experience and because I of course love children. I actually love kindergarten more. than I expected because um my aunt already did tell me like why are you not teaching kindergarten why are you not teaching kindergarten you'd be so good at children and I was like mm, I like my nieces and nephews that's about it but now I'm lying I'm actually really good at children I love them I'm from Nash but I never thought that that actually be like a kindergarten teacher so I was like ah for for a new experience if I'm going to go to a new country then let me just go big like let me change everything change my teaching level change my location um in terms of moving from an island to a bigger city change anything and everything that I could change I was like let's go let's go full force let's go from 0 from 0 to 100 like on the extreme side um and so yeah that's what I decided and then after like making that decision then I started speaking to um agents which was not easy agents were mice oh let me not say will because i don't want other people to have the same experience as me but my experience agents mice me <laughs> but um mostly they mice me because when i started speaking to agents i had not finished my documents i was i just began the document process like i think the only thing i had with me was a a cv at this point all i had was a cv and a, a video and an introduction video that's all i had to offer them because they'll be like hey we heard you're looking for this is this what do you have to offer and i'm like this and that and then they just wouldn't say anything um but after many agents i did find agents that were willing to like help and like ask for more 
but ter personally for me i did not enjoy the experience with agents to make matters worse yeah moving to china was like one of those things where you're like can anything else go wrong and it all goes wrong like it all goes as wrong as possible so agents want documents the reason i don't have these documents is things are delaying my documents in total were how many months delayed like when i had when i had gotten a like an agent that was willing to like work with me to help me get a school like oh i can't even sorry i'm trying to figure out how many months delayed they were but my documents were delayed by a few months like i needed to have my documents ready by january um not by january i needed to have my documents ready by the time i approached an agent so like let's say i wanted to start work in the chinese school year is february if i wanted to have started work by february in china i would have needed to have my documents done and ready by like december so that january it's all about moving it's all about getting placed it's all about settling good pill up December came and went, January came and went, February came and went, March. When I get my documents done, my documents finished in March. And that was the most stressful process. Mind you, I had an agent who was doing my documents in South Africa. And I was doing some of my documents while in South Korea. So I had two sets of documents to worry about. And then I had to bring those documents together so I can submit the documents in south korea were a bit easier where it beats because like i think getting my um fingerprints done was the easy part getting my police clearance done was an easy part and easy like when it was done but having to find the police station that you're supposed to go to having to know because we got rejected from one well, not rejected but like we went to certain police stations and they're like oh we don't do this here you must go to the in head headquarters triple decker like <laughs> so that experience in itself sucked because it was a lot of like ordering cabs trying to go to this police station go to that police station because you're thinking of work i need to go mang shaisa because i can't go in the weekend da, 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 that was a lot but when I got the police clearance done, I think when we found the correct police station, we got our documents back a week. I want to say a week or two later, our police clearance. Um, and then what showed us flames? Oh, there was another. There was something to do with the visa, embassy visa. No, not the visa. Sorry. There was a document that we had to go to the embassy for. And that was just when things were just going down and down because you had to have specific appointments. You couldn't go at specific appointment times. It only opened on a specific day. You go to work, so you need to ask for time off. You need to ask for this. There was a lot. Like my document process for China was two out of 10, highly wouldn't recommend because I don't like that stress um so after dealing with all my documents in south korea and then leaving to go to south africa i was supposed to go i was supposed to be in south africa for a month i think and i'm gonna say i'd hoped to be in south africa for one month and thought things are gonna happen like this now that like i've done my part in south korea nope got to south africa oh and my documents delayed even more I was constantly missing visa appointment dates, always rescheduling because this is missing, because that is missing. <sighs> yeah. That sucked. That was a zero. That was a two out of ten experience. I need to keep moving whilst it's moving very long. Um then third arriving in China. <sighs> oh my baby to go out is to go. Like, I arrived in China. Just even my arrival in China was so abrupt. Like, there was no... 
there was no time to say goodbye there was no farewell there was no announcement there was no it was like i woke up one day and they were like you need to be in china like i had to be in china within that week <sighs> fine i'm packing last oh i don't want to explain that whole process because i don't really don't belong but just know that i had no time i had no time to I had two days, like I, I had two days to pack my bags from the day I found out that I have to be in China and just being able to find the next flights out of South Africa. Listen, that was horrible. I wasn't able to pack properly. To this day, there's so many things, there's so, so, so many things that I wish I had done. Anyway, fine. I get to China. I get to the, yo, I don't know where to tell this story because there was just so much that happened. Um, I think we found out the day before. When I found out the day before that I started to do like a COVID test and this COVID test had to you had to do a some application on WeChat that you had to have like a code, you had to have a QR code. And you discovering this day before, like <laughs> I'm doing this day before. I travel. I don't know nothing about WeChat yet. I don't know how to even work that thing. I'm constantly calling my friends in China. What is this? I get to the airport. My luggage is overweight. I am dealing with that drama. It lights, baby girl. I am dealing with the weight. I'm taking out clothes. I'm leaving things everywhere. At the airport, who came to the airport? My friend, my Shati, my best friend, friends, my mom and my sister. We were supposed to have breakfast together. All we did was just help sort out my things. I look like a hot mess at the airport. Yo, yo, yo. Kwasi Zuguti, I had to help someone else do their QR code. So because of that, I was, they, like the airport staff was able to help me sort out my life while I was helping someone else. Fine. And then when I got to, so I flew from, I flew from China to Singapore, Singapore. From China to Singapore. I flew from South Africa to Singapore, Singapore to China. When I got to Singapore, only then it hit me that I'm traveling alone for the first time in my life, like traveling abroad alone. So with Korea, I did everything with my brothers. We did every, we were like this. We stayed in the same hotels. We went to the same places. We ate at the same place. We, we learned how to use chopsticks at the same time. We were just glued to each other. We did everything together. And when we moved, to, and then when Sim and I moved to the island, we did everything together. We stepped outside together. We got some cards together. We did like, like this. We were literally glued to each other. At one point, we had one kettle <laughs> where we would share. We were all in each other's apartments because one is borrowing the kettle. We had one this, like, we were twins. And then now I get to Singapore and I'm like, hold on a minute. Cause I know if I was with my brother, I'd be like, one of us would take on the responsibility of trying to figure out like how to navigate to one thing. And I get there and I'm like, how am I going to find my transfer flight? That part, when I had to do that, that's when it hit me. I'm like, oh, you alone alone. And then so I'm like, actually, what did you do? What have you done? Like, if he's lying in the thing that you've done and i'm like flip i i found i was right though i found my gate but they moved my flights they uh, they changed gates i mean obviously and i find this out when 10 minutes before um board, boarding gates open i'm going to go queue up and what annoyed me is i went up to security the first time to check if this is the right hold on i don't know if this is recording is recording i had to go check so i went up to the security guard the first time to be like oh is my flight here and, then, and he chased me away god be like hey go sit down so when i went in the second time and i was like so like when boarding time was um nearing and that's when he was like whoops you at the wrong gate and i was so upset i was so upset but they did call the other side and let them know it's like i'm coming fine gets onto my flight in singapore land in china i get there find they want this qr code um a lot of people 
like china getting into that airport or getting out of the airport was just a mess like if you didn't have that code ubugoa ubugoa because the code is a 24 hour code or something like that 24 or 48 hours so if your code expired you'd have to start again like if you didn't know how to start if you didn't know the process sweetie fine i get through i get through the qr code i get to the other side and now i'm at like the border well, now i'm at the game customs or whatever and they whatever they asking me for i don't know what document they needed my heart because i'm like i don't know i'm supposed to have that but luckily i had it on my i think they i can't remember what the question was but whatever it was i had it on pdf form and um even though i didn't have wi-fi or internet or anything like that i was able to just open my files and i showed them and they let me through they let me through i get to the other side um now i'm just panicking because i have no wi-fi i have no internet my sim card is not roaming my sim card is not doing anything how do i get out of the airport how do i go find my principal um luckily there's like a sim card um store right in the airport like where you go get your suitcase so i get my suitcase i buy a sim card right there and there i don't care how much i pay i just pay this amount which seemed like a huge amount of um in that moment i pay this huge amount i get a sim card and um luckily i'm able to go straight into my wechat i find my principal fine that night is done and dusted and then you know like i said when things can go wrong they really go wrong i discover that my bank cards are not working in china my apps are not working in china my bank card my bank apps so now i don't have money i don't have access to money yeah i don't have access to move money to send money to anybody i when I say I am crying, I am just in utter disbelief at what's happening. Because I just got to a new country. I'm at a hotel. What am I going to do? Secondly, I can't use my no, I can't use my WhatsApp because I don't know about this VPN thing yet. Um I can't there's nothing I can do. But like my friend was able to come on the same night at the hotel. Um, she set up a VPN for me and I was able to like um, text my mom and be like, eh, this is what's happening. And fine, we're able to sort that out. Now I have money, but you can't, I don't know how to explain this. Having cash in China, come with cash, nah, let's do that for you, for your own good. But also having cash in China is next to useless. Because everything is digital. Digital payment for everything. They will look at you and your cash and be like, what must you do about it? Listen, I have cash now. Nah? Fine. I need to go do my medical medical tests. How do I, how am I going to pay the taxi driver? I can't pay for the, the, the DD. I can't pay for... I can't do a lot. I can't get... <laughs> It was just a lot of things I just couldn't do. And eventually I I um I got the app and I was able to request like an, a meter taxi. And then the meter taxi wants their money, wanted their money like exactly as it is. So if it was 80 kwai, they wanted me to pay 80 kwai. It's a book I had when I withdraw from the ATM, it's a hundred kwai. How can I change? How can I change it? How can I change it? And now it's awkward now it's tense now Sianoa. and now i just want to cry i just want to cry even more but i don't know how i handled that situation but i did and then i was able to buy food at the convenience store so i ate noodles for many days i was just eating noodles because i tried to i tried to go to mcdonald's this one day and i just got into mcdonald's and it was just that self-help thing and there was no cash option. Maybe I could have paid cash at the till. I don't know. But I was just sad. I was sad and stressed and crying each and every day. Because what do you need? You need you need this app to, to, to get a... You need an app to get a taxi, of course, like a, a cab. You need an app 
to pay. You need an app to buy. You need an app to do this. You need an app for this. You need an app. App for Subway. App for. In things in Tinde. That was just horrible. You need an app to find an apartment. You need an. There were times where I just lay on the hotel floor and just look at the ceiling and be like, what have you done? Like at one point I was like, what the hell have I done? Because I couldn't take it anymore. It was just too stressful. So stressful. It was so, 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 so stressful. Like I'd wake up in the morning and wouldn't want to wake up because I'm like, oh, I need to get food. Getting food means I need to um, go to the convenience store. I can eat noodles, but I can't eat noodles the whole day. So now I need to try at convenience store food. I must do that. Um, I'm in a hotel and I'm, I don't have an apartment to move to yet. I'm apartment hunting. My agent and I are not agreeing on a lot of places. My time in the hotel is running out. Where am I gonna, um, how am I going to pay for like an extension for my hotel? More, not even how am I gonna pay, more than anything, I was like, I don't want to pay too much for a hotel because key deposit for an apartment in the city in China costs the million. I need to save up for key deposit. So I'm on a very strict budget as well. I do not want anything that's going to interfere with my key deposit. Key deposit money. I'm just know it was seven days of misery yeah <laughs> this this video is so all over but if i make sense to you somewhere shout out um but also also importantly struggling to navigate china without apps like um the like for example if i needed to go to a hospital now find i need a cab two i need to be able to put into that meter cab where am i going i don't know how to write where am i going yet because i don't know where i'm going um even when people send people like 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 when my school would send me the the link the pin i don't know how to pin yet i don't know how to use wechat i don't know how i don't know this i don't know where i'm going oh i don't know how to use apple maps yet I don't know how to take the address from Apple Maps and put it on Didi. I, I'm a walking book of I don't know. And that was the most stressful thing in the entire world. Not knowing how to get to places and not knowing how to get myself back. Because where am I going? What is happening? But lastly, in conclusion, finally we're at the end. Um, what is this now? now that i've basically adjusted um and just overall recap from moving from the slow life i guess living on an island taking a bus everywhere where i lived was my apartment building it was a convenience store uh right at the corner it was a supermarket if you go a little bit further down it was cafes same million and three like you had everything at convenience like right there in your convenient hand uh, and now I live in the city. It's a subway to everything. You walk. <laughs> you're always walking. I feel like you're always walking. You're always standing. Because the subway is packed. And then you're walking from the subway to your workplace. And then you walk. You, you walk in there. You walk in there. Um, you're cycling. You are. Just like the city life is just different. The city life is huge. I went from being able to go down to the beach to relax when I need a break to the fact that I live I live close to a park and I live close to a river and I've never been to either or like when I come when I take that long walk from the subway to my apartment I don't care a damn I want to go in and rest I don't want to do anything more because I've been walking and standing the whole day um, but otherwise life in China now that everything has recovered from all the crashing and bum go that I was going through from documents to actually moving to settling to being post settling post settling in China 10 out of 10 highly recommend uh, would I do something this crazy again I want to say no but in Gaza is not 
Hanka Zucha one day girl fell out. Mm, uh, I'm out. I would I'd probably end up in Japan or Spain or who knows where with the way my mind is set up. I just need I just need one swing and a button. So one swing and a tick, one thing to tick one thing to take me off and I'm out. Uh but yeah guys, this turned out to be a long video. Not surprised. Uh but I hope that you guys enjoy. Um if you have any comments, questions, um leave them down below. Um I hope you guys really like this video. I have nothing else to add on. I need to edit and release this video. So catch you guys on my next vlog or video. Whatever. <laughs> See you guys. Bye.